And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Agricola Family Edition. Now, Agricola came out several years ago. It was a very popular game. And when Agricola came out, it was a game about farming, which doesn't sound like a very interesting theme, but it managed to make it very interesting. And Agricola came with a family version in the box, plus the full version of the game. And most people played the family version maybe one or two times and then jumped to the full version. But the full version was fairly complex. When I heard that Agricola Family Edition was coming out, I assumed that this was just the family version of the game. That's kind of true, but this is actually even simpler than the family version of the game. That's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a kind of streamlined version of Agricola. Let's take a look. There's a board here placed in the middle of the table. This board has a puzzle piece and that's going to be used for a number of players, whether that be one, two, three, or four. And so the game is going to take place over 14 rounds. You're going to move this piece here to keep track of the rounds. At the beginning of each round, you're going to look at each space and put that many items on it that it shows. So this one here shows two brick. This one here shows one brick. This shows one flax. This shows one wood. This shows two wood. This one here shows three wood. This one here shows a food. This one here shows a sheep. And that's pretty much it. You'll notice a pig here and a cow there, but those don't start showing up in those spaces until round six and eight. Each player is going to start in front of them with a wooden house with two rooms and two people in those two rooms. Starting with the player who has the rooster, each player is going to take turn putting someone out on the board and if it's a spot where it says to take, the, they get all the resources that are there. See, if no one takes the resources, then next round more resources are added to these so the piles can get bigger as time goes by. Some spots don't have a pile. You just get whatever it says. Here you get a wood, brick, and a flax. Here you can uh, get a pasture and change two wood for a stable. When you get a pasture, you're going to pick a size pasture on the side of the board and pay that much wood. So I can pay three wood to take a small pasture, five wood to take this large pasture, six to take one of these large chucklehead pastures, and seven to take this giant pasture. You're going to put those in front of you. It doesn't really matter. You're just going to have these in front of you. These pastures have a certain cost of wood and they also can hold that many animals. If you build a stable in a pasture, it can hold double the number of animals that, are, that it would normally hold. Here you can take a, you know, build yourself a pasture like normal. Here you can take a field, and you'll just put a field in front of you in your display. Here you get a flax or a wheat, and here you plant a wheat. When you plant a wheat in a field, you basically triple the wheat that is in that field. Here you get a food. Here you can take the first player marker and get a food. Uh, normally you would not, the, the, whoever has this is going to keep going first over and over again until someone goes to that spot. Uh, if you go to this spot up here, you can build one of these buildings. These buildings allow you to convert different things into food. So this lets you convert um, a wheat and a wood into five food. There's different costs, so the first person to build it will build the cheapest one. This one also lets you convert wheat and wood into food. It's not as many, but you can convert animals into food. When you get animals, you need to put them in pastures that you have, or you can store one animal in your house. As time goes by, you're going to be able to add more rooms to your house by building more wooden rooms in your house. And eventually then you're able, if you have an extra room, you can go to that spot to take an extra worker. And you can have up to five workers at the end of the game. And eventually pigs show up and then more special buildings will show up that players can build. These buildings, once built, allow you once per turn to change something like, for example, this lets you change a wood into two food, or it lets you change a brick into two food. And at the end of the game, we're going to give you points for every two wood gives you a point. Every two bricks gives you a point. There's harvests on the board. Anytime there's a harvest, each field that has wheat on it, you'll take one off and put it in front of you. If you have two or more animals of the same type somewhere on the board, you will get one more of that animal. And you also have to pay two food for each worker that you have 
unless you just got a new one at Turner, like a baby, they only cost one extra food for that worker. If you don't have enough food to feed all your workers, you can substitute wheat, or you can use a building that lets you do wood. Otherwise, for each food you can't pay, you'll take a begging marker, which is worth minus three points. That's a pretty big deal, since there is so few points in this game. Every field that you build is worth a point. Every pasture that you build is worth a point. Every animal in a field is worth a point. Uh, each wheat in a field is worth a point. Uh, your rooms are not worth points unless you upgrade them to brick. Upgrading them to brick does nothing over the course of the game, but at the end of the game gives you a point for each room that, that has bricks. And you also get points from some of these special buildings. For example, every three different resources here is worth an extra point at the end of the game. Uh, each of your people that you have is worth three points. You'll add up all your points, subtract any you have for beggars, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, I, I'm kind of of two minds here. I want to talk to people who've played Agricola before first, then if you've never played Agricola, I'll talk to you. For those of you who played Agricola before, this game gets rid of the whole grid type thing. You just build rooms out there. It's really easy to build things. You don't actually need to build walls around your pastures. Pastures come pre-built. In fact, this game reminds me a lot more of Agricola, all creatures great and small, than it does Agricola. This is very easy. It's simple. It's this, the concept's the same. But this, if you wanted to teach someone Agricola, might be a good stepping stone to that. Now, if you've never played Agricola before, this, and you're looking for a simple, fun family game, this is one that I would recommend. Now, you do need to know that there's one aspect to this game that I'm not a huge fan of, but I put up with, and that is feeding your people. Agricola is the game that kind of made that popular, to feed your people, and you do so after every harvest phase. In fact, on the board here, you need to feed your people after the fourth turn, after the seventh turn, after the ninth, eleventh, thirteenth, and fourteenth. So it's after the first three, then three, then two, 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 then one. So you better be getting food. There's not a ton of ways to get food on this board. So you need to make sure you're always hunting down food and getting buildings. You definitely need to get one of those buildings in this game that lets you trade animals and or uh, wheat into food. Once you have one of those buildings, your food problems are a lot less problematic because you can get these animals much more easily. This game is going to please people who like the animals. It gets rid of the convoluted scoring that Agricola has and just gives you lots of points. You don't need to have pigs and cows and sheep. You could just have a whole pile of pigs if you want. And I like that. That's fun. And it's fun to have like the farm up. Here I got my pasture of pigs and here's my pasture of cows. And here's my pasture of sheep. Or maybe you just want to plant wheat everywhere and you're trying to get a lot of wheat out in the fields because that's points at the end of the game. But if you harvest too quickly, it's kind of worthless. You can always trade wheat in for food. It's not a good ratio, but if you have a bread making machine and you got a bunch of wheat fields, you're great. The game really has three strategies. Build a, you know, wheat fields, uh, go for the animals, or go for buildings that give you points for having resources, or some combination of those. Uh, I, I think that the game does a very good job at wavering between the two, three, and four players. The solo thing is its own, you know, you're just trying to get a high score. But two, three, or four, because that this puzzle piece here is going to flip it's going to lower the number of spaces so it keeps the competition for the spaces good. If you go to a place, nobody else can go there. So there's always competition and people will often consider taking that rooster. It also gives you a food. But taking that rooster so you can go first. Do you need to have more people to win the game? I would say you probably need at least three. You, you need to get somebody. Later on near the end of the game, there's a space that's added on the board where you can add someone to your house even if you don't have a room for them, bunk beds or whatever. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, that's good and all, but then you need to feed them extra food at the end of the game. The more people you have, the more spots you can go to, but it also makes the board more crowded. Uh, I like the way in this game how things pile up. It's really easy. There's not much text on the board at all. In fact, there's zero text. So you could, this is a completely language independent game. Uh, the components are good. The tiles are double sided. So you'll see the, you know, the wooden houses have clay house on the other side. These fields have pastures on the other side. The components are nice wooden shapes. The whole thing's a very attractive looking package. Now, I like Agricola. I like its younger cousin Caverna better. Um, but this one's, you know, I like Agricola fine. This one, though, is great for me. I like this as a gateway game. I can play some people who've never played one of these games. I would never play Agricola Caverna. 
um, Feast for Odin with people who were new to gaming. Those games are incredibly overwhelming, a billion pieces and overwhelming rules. This is not. This is not necessarily it's like, this is a stepping stone for Agricola. It could be, but forget all that. I could just use this game to play with someone. You're like, I don't know, farming doesn't sound that interesting. You might be surprised. It is fun to build a farm and have a pasture full of animals and stuff and see them reproduce and get the food for your people. And the gameplay is nice and quick. The box here says 45 minutes. I think that's that's almost exactly right. It might even be shorter than that. So this is this is a nice change. I like this. This is a good product. I hope a lot of people play this and find out how much fun a worker placement where you're putting workers onto the board can be. Recommend this one, Agricola Family Edition. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.